Hey, how you doing? Have you ever been wondering what goes into making a record? How do you make a song? How do all the layers combine? How do things get stuck together to turn into a finished record? Well, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to be breaking down Like a Dream by Louise Burns and we'll show you how it all fit together. It feels like a dream. My name is Damien Taylor. I'm a six-time Grammy-nominated record producer, mixer, songwriter, programmer, and all-around creative collaborator. Um, I work with artists to get the vision that's in their head coming out of the speakers for the whole world to enjoy. Uh, I do stream three times a week on Twitch. If you ever have any questions about music production, you can come over there and, you know, we talk about all this kind of stuff. Uh, that's at twitch.tv slash here is Damien. The link for that is down below. Um, and without any further ado, actually, why don't we just jump in and have a look at this track and We'll see what's happening. As mentioned, this is a Louise Burns song. Louise and I co-produced this, um, and we'll start. I, I highly recommend checking out the whole song if you get a moment. It's off her album Portraits. Uh, you can see here we're scrolling up and down in Pro Tools, which is a software that I use to record and mix music. Uh, but why don't we just start from the ground up? We'll start with some drums and some beats, and, and we'll go from there. So the kind of the initial rhythmic propulsion for this track. Uh, is this little thing here. It's a filter beat, which is a whole bunch of different kick drums that were all processed through a plugin called Vocal Synth 2 uh, by Isotope. And then we added a couple layers on in programming here. So here are those, just give it like a nice bit of kind of roomy depth. And then another little layer there that's processed as well through Vocal Synth. Uh, we've got this live recording here of some kind of percussion. This is Pedro Zelme, who is our engineer uh, on our recording sessions in Vancouver. He's playing like a snare drum under his arm by hand. Pedro's from Brazil, so he's got that feel. So these are the kind of core elements here. So that's what's happening at the start. Uh, once the kind of intro of the track hits, uh, we start bringing in a few more organic layers. So this is a kind of recording of a live drum kit. I believe I played this super, super simple. It's just like some mallets playing very, very softly on the toms. Check this out. So really like gentle and resonant. They're processed very, very gently. It's all just about kind of getting some oxygen. So let's hear those on top of everything. So here how they really like unify together. And then what's happening here? I think Dave Prowse played this little bit of percussion. Yeah, that's just in that same room in Vancouver. I think Dave's just like tapping on a flight case or something. Really basic. I think this song we really wanted to kind of have like a slightly unusual non-standard drum track. Uh, wanted it to just kind of roll really kind of... Relentless might be a little bit over the top, but we wanted it to have like a real kind of momentum or inertia to the track without having too many kind of like aggressive frequencies just so that the whole song could breathe a lot. Now we have these uh, couple of hi-hats, just programmed hi-hats that just tick over the top here. Just keep it, keep it ticking over. Here we go with everything else. And so this is all that's happening through the verses. Now when we get to the pre-chorus, uh, we have a couple of hi-hat layers coming in. So, um, where are we? Here's one. So that's pretty straight, just hitting accents on beat two and beat four. And as we get over into the chorus here, actually, you can just hear it's like a little bit more open. So you'll see how I've like chopped all these regions here. This means that I've been able to grab different aspects of a performance and loop them up where need be, tighten things up, kind of choose different bits. Because again, we're going for this whole feeling on this track that's a combination of live performance and electronic programming. Um, so just getting really specific about exactly how the live performance stuff is happening, like how much kind of looseness you're letting into it, both frequency-wise, dynamically, as well as timing uh, is very important. Um, there's this other hi-hat layer. This is the same hi-hat, different set of microphones. So this is playing a little bit more of a syncopated thing. Now, if we layer these two together, it kind of sounds like just one hat, basically. See, really simple, really subtle. Uh, let's let's actually hear all of those just together. 
when I come in with the rest of the beat. Very, very subtle. This is like in the pre-chorus, it just wants to open up a little bit. So here's the last bar of the verse. So you, said, you just, you more feel them. All right, now what's happening at the chorus? We'll clear our solos. So in the chorus, this is actually a big flight case. And I think there's three or four people in there all banging on it. So you get the kind of, uh, the little bit of flamming on the hits. And that just, I think, helps, uh, just helps a feel of a, almost feels a little bit more like a crowd. Do you know what I mean? Well, it is a crowd, it's a whole group of people. But these aren't needing to be too bang on there. Oh, hopefully you can hear that. <laughs> there's some construction happening across the street there. Uh, speaking of hits. Okay, so there's that percussion layer that comes in. Now there's like a bit of a weird kind of clanky program snare. So definitely not trying to be too live or normal, but hear how that's like quite mid-range and grainy. Uh, then Louise played this letter. This is like an envelope, I believe it was her um, British Columbia voting referendum ballot. Uh, but a medium envelope, we just like popped a microphone here and she just like dropped it onto her lap and turned it over and dropped it. So check this out. So kind of weird for a drum track to be playing an envelope, uh, but you know, kind of has almost a bit of that ASMR vibe in there. So let's hear these all together. Oh, then also there's just like a little bit of a transition and a whoosh across the top here uh, coming up to the hit. So last bar, the pre-chorus into the chorus. All right, pretty straightforward, right? Pretty simple. There's a lot of layers in here. But the main thing is that the layers are all trying to work together. You know what I mean? It's all about unity. Uh, now when we go into verse 2, the letter keeps going through here. Oh, it's worth saying as well, like the, uh, the kind of percussion room stuff, um, these do move around a little bit in different sections because we recorded a bunch of people all playing together. So the choruses. There's like a bit of a weird shaker in the background there, whereas in the verses, just one thing on its own. Let's see if anything changes over here. <laughs> all right, so pretty subtle, but all these kind of details all add together. Uh, you can also see that uh, the kind of like floppy toms as well, they just, you know, the dynamics open up a bit more in the choruses too. Whereas in the verses, see, they're pretty quiet. Pretty subtle, but all this stuff adds up. Um, okay, so second pre-chorus is a very similar build. Oh, actually, what happened here? Second pre-chorus, we didn't bring in that hat layer, but it looks like we have... What's happening on this hat in the second verse? Okay, so it's just a longer pattern through there, and then it turns into like a two-bar pattern. Uh, so second chorus, is anything else different? Oh yeah, we just have a really simple live shaker coming in here. With a little bit of room on it. Uh, now when we get to the bridge, this is a section here where we got the B at the top. Uh, things get a little bit busier. So see the shaker steps up there. Uh, anything else coming in? Oh yeah, we have this, oh yeah. So that's an actual live kick and snare, I think played by Pedro Zelmi again. It's pretty quiet in the overall drum track, but the point of having these here is really just to kind of layer up and give us some more depth in the drums. So let me just solo these all so they're all playing together. Then we have a tambourine that comes in here. Really simple. And then there's this one that's very kind of called distant tom for a reason. But here how that's kind of a little bit weird and a little bit loose as well. So I'm letting a couple of things get a little bit floppy and a bit weird, but overall trying to keep it pretty tight and punchy. So that's all the drums. Uh, why don't we move over and see what is happening in the rest of the rhythm section of the low end? 
Uh, so Louise, as well as being a singer and a great writer and producer herself, or uh, bass was her original and primary instrument. So we got a bass track here from her. And that bass has like, this is a DI channel that are processed in the computer just to get it nice and subby. And then there's an amp layer on there, an acoustic amp, well not an acoustic amp, a physical amp. And here we just get a little bit more detail from that. And then there's a bit of distortion in parallel. So nothing crazy with this bass sound, we just really wanted it to just be holding it down. Now we've got... We've got this program kind of bass layer here. That's really just there to give to give us a little bit of movement, but that's exactly tracking the bass notes. And then that's joined by an electric guitar. It's kind of like hyper distorted and it just follows, again, follows what the bass is doing. Uh, you can see that we actually automated the level of this throughout the song. So this little line shows it getting louder and quieter and see here towards the end, it's pretty prominent. All right, so that's really just there to give us a bit of vibe. And these next few layers are all just about subtle kind of depth, subtle vibes, basically. So this thing here, something else we programmed on a laptop. Let me just turn this up for a sec. So that's just hitting the changes on the bass. Pop that back to where it was. And then Solar Flare, this is a sound from Heaviosity. Kind of a bit weird in digital. It's like a sound library they have of kind of processed electric guitars and stuff. But again, this is tucked way, way, way in the back. See how quiet that is? So that's really one for like the headphone squad. But again, all these things, they just kind of add up and give us a nice bit of depth. Let's look at this next batch here. Uh, this is, so this is just a sampled piano, very, very gentle, processed through some kind of spacious stuff. So this is in the chorus. And then let's see what it does on the reintro here. Just goes up in range, but very much a background layer. Um, there's this other really tasty uh, deep thing here that Matt Robertson uh, actually played for us. So this is a Hammond organ that we recorded at Matt's studio on Salt Spring Island in British Columbia. That just sits really beautifully in the background. And then right at the end of the song, Matt like really opened it up. And you get the kind of full like transcendental ethereal gospel vibe coming through there. So actually Matt played this, he played the notes with his right hand and then his left hand he was using all the organ draw bars. So that when he's moving these all around, it's very unusual to see an organ player do that, but that kind of means that the tone of the sound is like constantly shifting. So it's a really great way to get like a nice harmonic sense of movement through there. Uh, what else is happening um, in the earlier parts of the track? Oh yeah, we have this acoustic piano that we recorded in Matt's living room, not in his studio. Uh, it was a bit out of tune and we used Solemnity Melodyne uh, after the fact to keep it in tune, but this was actually recorded on an iPhone, just using the voice memo on a phone. What we did was we printed a work in progress of the track, put it on headphones for Matt, went upstairs, uh, and just recorded it kind of in free time, him playing it to his headphones and put it back in the computer and lined it up. But here how this is like really crunchy. Let's turn this up. And this is all also processed through some universal audio tape stuff. And that sits way in the background again. Uh, in the bridge,
So Matt's playing much more of a kind of a livelier part through here, but if, if this was actually on like a big piano that was beautifully recorded, it would take up so much space. So it's really just like a subliminal thing to keep the track moving along. On that note, actually, we have a couple of other layers of programming that come in on the bridge. The bridge is like the song does a big kind of key change into a major key on the bridge. It's quite a, quite a kind of significant moment. So see, we have like a kind of forward movement sounds here. And then these guys that like swell up behind. And then this patch, trying to remember who the Brian Ferry's patch was from. That's just giving us some weird vibes in the background. All right, now we get into a bunch of like nice performance stuff. Uh, Darcy Hancock played guitar for us on this track. And what he did for us in the verse was gorgeous. We really loved it. Let's just, just check this out. So we've got, we got Darcy to play this twice, that's what's called double tracked, they're hard panned, one is in your left ear, one's in your right ear. Uh, here they are just dry, really nice kind of like simple clean tone, just a tiny tiny little bit of break up on there, a little bit of modulation. Then I use some spring reverb back at my studio, just to give it a bit more depth. Uh, but because this, whoops, because this guitar part plays around the vocal, it needed to be quite a precise sound to not wash out the vocal. Um, it goes into this really nice arpeggio as well in the chorus. Here we go. So here, how that's all feeling pretty cool. Uh, but one thing we love doing a lot is layering different textures. Uh, so Matt Robertson went and did a Quite a weird kind of synth noise that follows that guitar. And just hearing through, you wouldn't know that synth is there, but it's one of those things you take it out and you'll miss it. Uh, let's just see what's happening here. This is a VSS30 track. VSS30 is like a, it's a really old school Yamaha sampling keyboard, very lo-fi in a really beautiful way. And uh, whoops, looks like this is just hitting on the downbeats. Oops, let's open up the effects return there as well. So yeah, so that VSS just kind of hits on chord changes through the song. And again, just hear how the kind of texture and fidelity on that is really different. So when that layers up with everything else, it just lets us get this nice kind of sense of sense of depth and sense of texture to everything. Uh, what else we got here at the intro of the song? Uh, here we, how we've got these guitar chords. Uh, we did this a very similar trick of just doubling them up with some synths. Just tucked in behind the guitars to give some more texture. Alright, so that's that so far. And then we have these big kind of tasty chord stacks in the chorus. This song here, Emerald Haze, uh, this is off Louise's original demo. So she got this sound. Um, has a really beautiful atmosphere to it, and this really set the tone for the feeling of the song and also the feeling that we wanted to have in the production. So again, we're very lucky. Matt Robertson did some doubling on both an SQ-80 and a Juno. Here's Matt's doubles together. See how this Juno stuff comes in through here? And we'll pop the Emerald Haze back in. So yeah, they just combine really well. They kind of feel like one big section, but just again, the way that the different kind of tones and stuff gel together is lovely. Uh, that's them later on in the major key bridge. Uh, so let's see how those all feel going into the bridge. Okay, yeah, 
Yeah, Matt made us this kind of effecty noise here. Quite an extreme sound. It's pretty cool, but that just tucks in the background to help us with the swoosh over into the new section. And that combines with our other, uh, you know, symbol reverse symbol stuff up in the top of the drum track. Actually, let's use page down, shall we? That's a bit faster. Uh, so that we have a whole bunch more synths also that come in on the chorus. Um, we got this nice, like, counter-melodic thing first off. Oh. Sorry, that wasn't that one. I think it was this one here, our counter-melody. There we go. So again, this is like an SQ80 sound. SQ80 is an old really interesting synthesizer. It had like digital oscillators and would do wavetable stuff, uh, but then analog filters. Um, we won't get too deep into synth history here, but Matt keeps it in his studio for a good reason. Oh, and that's actually, there's an SQ80 and a profit layer. That's the SQ and then that's a profit. Now, otherwise, this whole thing we've been talking about, about wanting to have like a really nice kind of flowing feeling through this song. The song is called Like a Dream, so it should feel like a dream. Uh, the other layers that come in here are really just like nice kind of like movement synth layers. See how this later on. That's just a really nice kind of like fills out a certain frequency range. Whoops. Then we got another chunk of nice kind of movement on Junos. I think this track actually just stays on one note through the whole through the whole song there. Oh, sorry, not through the whole song, through the whole section, I should say. So yeah, so Matt's just, you know, hand tweaking this as it's going down. Uh, worth saying as well, he prints stuff with a couple of different layers of effects. So there's like this reverby stuff on there, a little echo plugin, and then the clean synth itself. So we used a little bit of a blend of all of those. And see how like, you can kind of see the way that the waves change through here, so that's just nice having that kind of hand, hand tweaked feeling. And again, it's not like each, each of these layers in and of themselves need to be too dramatic, but rather when they all, all of those combinations kind of gel together, you just get like, it just stops it feeling too static, do you know what I mean? Let's us feel like we're kind of flowing through a river, like there's some movement or development happening. Uh, on this one here, it's another Juno track, but the, the direct is switched off this time. Nice and high. And let's just hear where this kind of sits. Here has some really nice and up high. Like if we play it earlier. This is without. So we've got a few things in here. Again, it's like you don't really notice them when they come in, but when they're not there, it just doesn't feel quite as immersive, basically. So this is out. And then in. And then I really love this last layer here from Matt. This is just really nice movement. So up in that similar range, he's just made all these really kind of beautifully, like, heavenly, just flowing layers. Again, just feel that movement we've got going through there. A couple of the elements from the live recording. Sorry, from the live percussion, just little rattles and stuff in the end. Just keep the keep the humanity in there. All right, so that's all the instrumental stuff. And now you can see we have all of these vocals. There we go. So see, you know, it's not till the bridge that we get this whole big stack coming in. Uh, most of the song, all these red ones are like lead vocals. And then actually this next track underneath it there, that's just a double. So they're all singing the same part. 
So we have basically one chunk of harmonies that goes through this song. Uh, Louise is really great at doing a, a lower harmony that sits underneath the vocal. Uh, but let's just have a look at when the vocal very first comes in. Um, there's a nice subtle reverse reverb here just to help us introduce vocal. Now you might notice that I actually have the vocal is kind of split across a few different uh, channels here in Pro Tools. And the reason I've done this is because each section, like check the pre-chorus here. I've got a lot. Very low, the verses are kind of um, in about the days, days nicely that in the coming. middle of Louise's register and then the choruses. Feels like a dream. Kind of open up towards the upper register but not quite up in a falsetto and also texturally we're in di very different parts of the song so basically what this lets me do is i can do a different treatment both based on the tone of the voice so ensuring things that are changing like the frequency and the dynamic that we're hearing in her vocals can be adapted to how she's singing at different points in time and then also the effects like the echoes the reverbs the way that the sense of space works around the vocal they can be dialed really nicely to each section of the track so uh, the verse is just, you know, one voice on its own. And then when we get to the pre-chorus, all these layers come in. I've got a lot to lose, you said, and I'm not gonna win this time. So you stopped, you stopped running. Nice echo off the end of the vocal there. And then just opens up. You can hear there's like a little bit more echo and stuff happening on that on the on the big landing note. Uh, so let's just check these together. You stop running, and it feels like a dream forever and ever. Now notice the way that like there's like held notes on the vocal, and then the vocal melody moves, kind of like held, move, held, move. The the like arpeggiated guitar stuff is tending to happen when the vocals and more of the sustain part. So there's like quite a nice interplay, like a call and response between the guitar and the vocal. And that's really, I think, what we really love, like in the verses as well. I hear they're kind of playing together, but Darcy's part really just like kind of complements the melody. It like weaves into the melody really well. Days that are coming. And then in the pre-choruses, you, you know, that kind of offbeat choppiness, again, bounces off the vocal quite well. Now, small note here, going into the chorus, we've gone from, um, you know, the pre-chorus processing here, and we just do these feels like, you'll notice I put those back over on the verse channels. That is just, again, like where it is in, in her range and also the way the effects are used. I wanted these high notes to really like ring out for a long time, but when these lower notes, if they're going through the same processing, um, A, the kind of, again, the like dynamic and frequency-based stuff that we have on the higher notes here, doesn't quite complement it so well, but then also you get these big long tails that are coming off the lower notes of the vocal. And as you know, we have all those kind of, that really nice thick wad of synthesizers coming in. So I wanted to not overcloud the track with those. Make it like dream. We'll be together. Could be worth saying as well, the backing vocals, it's a stack there, panned. I got four, so there's two in your left ear, two in your right ear. I have those very wide to leave room for the lead vocal to kind of come into the middle of the sound picture there as well. And quite a different treatment on those harmonies. They just need, you want to kind of like, really get the texture and understand what the note is, but we want to let other elements kind of occupy the meaty chunk of the sound picture. So verse two, it's really like, you know, the track is unfolding a little bit differently behind, but you know, same thing, reverse reverb into the vocal, verse into the pre, into the choruses, harmony layers. Now, the next big dramatic vocal change is when we get to the bridge, when we get all of these ooh layers coming in. Here we go. And actually, just again, a reminder that the bridge goes, it's a key change. So we go from a minor key through the whole rest of the song into a major key. 
And I'm going to play this just the vocals on their own. So hear how Louise's lead in here. She has a note in there that leads us into the major on the forever and ever. Just check this out. Forever and ever. So that's minor. Forever and ever. How many times do I have to tell you? Stop wandering around. You won't do any better. Now those oohs are pretty subtle when we start off. Uh, but what we did is we just kept bringing them up through the songs. So by the end... They're a lot more significant, but it is worth just clarifying as well that these oohs, in a way, are kind of part of the instrumental. Like they really just merge in with all the synths. So let's just listen to this change with the uh, with the oohs in there. check it towards the end so really the ooze just give us like it's kind of breath and oxygen and like an organic layer that joins in with all the kind of celestial synth stuff so we've kept it all moving through there do you know what i mean all the synths are moving there's just like a lot of frequency washing around which is very helpful for this whole it feels like a dream <laughs> concept that we're exploring uh so you can hear we got you know back with the with everything switched on um you know same interplay of like the lower harmonies Stop kind of gets it has a bit more space through here so a lot of the track kind of comes up and around and again this isn't that this track doesn't want to be like intense or in your face there's a lot going on but it's much more about like we're being immersed in it <laughs> and let's just check then just the lead vocal on its own no layers no doubles going into kind of the outro <laughs> And you know, there you go. That is that is how we made Like a Dream. How Louise and I made this track. Really, I just want to stress as well, Louise and I co-produced this song. Louise is a great uh, producer as well as a writer and artist. She's got a really fascinating career in music. Uh, again, this track is off her album Portraits. Let's switch modes here. Uh, her album Portraits on Light Organ Records. And the reason I actually made this video, this, this record's been out for a little while. Uh, a year, maybe just under a year. But Louise and I have just done some special versions of these songs. Uh, it's a compliment to the album Portraits. The new releases is going on a record called Silhouettes. Portraits, Silhouettes, get it right. And the Silhouettes versions are like really stripped back, kind of, kind of dub versions. Uh, pulled out like a lot of the lead instruments and we really wanted to make versions that were bringing different textures to the fore. So they're much more of like a really spacious kind of textural journey. Uh, so Like a Dream has been released, that came out uh, last week, and I've actually just made a YouTube video as well about the dub version uh, of this as well. So there should be a little link coming up, or and or down below as well, which will let you hop over and check out that version. It's interesting just to hear like the way that the different textures combine in different ways, and you know, it's just really nice ways to think about how to combine layers you know if you're thinking about i want to be making a song how do i make a song how do i produce a record uh, i just hope these are really useful examples showing you the way that we've used computerized elements human elements editing elements mix tricks performance tricks just to get something that's nice and cohesive um let me know if you like this video um i work on a ton of records ton of different styles and genres so I'd, you know it could be quite fun for me to share more track breakdowns like this um, just leave a comment, 
Uh, if you're interested in that, let us know. Do the old classic like and subscribe. You know how that works. We're on YouTube. Uh, but otherwise, again, just like you're more than welcome to drop in on my Twitch stream. The link for that is below. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm more than happy to answer any questions about record production. I have a really, really nice community on there. We just kind of hang out and talk about art and creativity and life and all that good stuff. Um, I've also launched a platform called the Complete Producer Network, which is an online community where you can connect with other people at different stages in their music production, music creation career. We have everyone on there from folks who've been making beats for a few weeks to, you you know, friends of mine who have won Grammys, uh, sold gajillions of records and everyone in between. Uh, Complete Producer Network is really a place to explore what a music creator, that's a deliberately broad term in the modern era, all the things you might want to think about. It's a really, really wonderful time to make music. We have all these incredible tools here to help us. Um, and it's great to think about everything from like, what's my career strategy, what's a mindset I'm using, how do I keep productive through to the actual mechanics of like writing, producing, engineering, mixing, and then how do you get your music out to an audience? How do you engage with an audience? How do you like build an audience? How do you promote stuff? What do you do with your graphic design, your branding, your styling, all that kind of stuff. Um, and also on Complete Producer Network, it's it's free to come on and just get involved in the community. You can also like meet collaborators on there. We have like, you know, one of our members in India is collaborating with someone in Singapore, someone in Mexico is collaborating with someone in Finland. It's, it's really, really cool. But I'm also going to be launching some paid courses very shortly where I like actively teach you the real specifics of how I make records. So get on over to completeproducer.net. Link is down below. Um, it is a, an application or invitation only, but it's very easy to apply. Um, and unless there's something catastrophic, you'll be let in. Uh, it's just I really want people on there who are very deliberate and willing to contribute to that community. So completeproducer.net. Jump on over there, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in another video. I'll be sharing a lot more of the stuff from my studio here, so I'll see you on another video. See you on Twitch. Thank you for watching. See you soon.